Hey everybody, my name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. In the ever increasingly popular world of small SUVs, you have a lot of choices and you have a lot of right choices. Some choices are more right than others. And this is where the rightest choice of all the right choices comes in, the Mazda CX-5. The Mazda CX-5 has quickly become Mazda's best-selling model. You used to be able to only get your CX-5 in three trim levels, the base sport, the middle touring, and the top grand touring. However, Mazda's doing a little bit of experimentation in the North American market, and they're offering a new trim level. This is what they're calling the Grand Select. The Grand Select is everything that you get in the GT trim, the top trim, minus adaptive cruise, lane keep assist, and a couple driver aids. They've also knocked $500 off the starting price just to see what features are important to most Americans. Mazda does a fantastic job of offering value at all trim levels. One of the examples of how they do this is offering LED daytime running lights on all trim levels as standard. Another place that Mazda gives you fantastic value across all trim levels is in their wheels. Uh, if you've noticed, you've never seen a CX-5 with normal kind of chrome-ish colored wheels. Everything is gunmetal. Why? Because gunmetal looks better on pretty much all cars. That's just a fact. That's science. It's not refutable. Um, so what Mazda does is they give you beautiful gunmetal alloy wheels, 19 inches for uh, touring and grand touring trims. The Sport, you get still very beautiful 18-inch uh, gunmetal wheels uh, as standard. Americans want practicality. But since we're Americans, we want it all. So we want practicality to be sexy. So what has Mazda done for us? They've lowered the ride height of the CX-5 an inch and they've widened it. Very sexy. So what else do you have to have to be the sexiest little SUV on the road? Well, you have to have squinty rear tail lights to match your squinty rear headlights in the front. They're a beautiful LED and they work really well. Also, you need to have dual exhaust. Why? Because like the wheels, it just looks good. One of the best things that Mazda could have done for this new generation is add a power tailgate. The last generation didn't have it. Not a problem anymore. As we move into the trunk, you see that you have about 30 cubic feet of space, as well as a 40-20-40 split. Take that, Honda. Of course, you can lower the seats individually here, center, left, and right. With all seats down, you get about 60, 60 cubic feet of space and it closes on its own too. <laughs> Mazda's Kodo design language is continued for this generation, and if it looks like the front badge is encased in plastic, it's because it's the adaptive cruise radar sensor. Additionally, cutouts in the front grille make it look additionally menacing. Moving down the rear, you see the all-wheel drive badge as this vehicle is equipped with Mazda's all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is an option that you can get on any trim. And I have to point it out in every video, the tailpipes are direct and real, not fake cutouts. The interior of the CX-5 is where you're going to see the greater value in the Mazda over cars in the segment. Pay attention to the nice stitching and the gray ash wood in the dash. Additionally, it's continued into the door next to the door handle for additional elegance. Mazda is also the only vehicle in this segment to offer white leather interior. This tester is in black, but the white is fantastic and would be my choice. Additional features are three-level heated seats, as well as a heated steering wheel. However, the heated steering wheel is not the entire steering wheel. The heating is applied at the bolsters, uh, but no heating is applied at the top or bottom of the wheel. Mazda's infotainment system is lovely and extremely responsive. It can be controlled by the wheel down by the gear selector or a touch screen. Of course, you can pair your phone to make calls and listen to music, as well as control navigation. You can also control things uh, such as vehicle settings, to drive modes, and where you want your heads-up display. And the best thing, of course, is that they left a physical volume knob. Mated to the volume knob is Bose Audio, as this is a high-trimmed Mazda. Additional features include a driver safety suite, including lane keep assist, 
radar adaptive cruise with full stop and start, as well as many things that can be controlled through the steering wheel, including voice controls and again, adaptive cruise as well as phone. An interesting quirk about the CX-5 is the push button start. The push button start will turn green and only activate when your foot is on the brake. Notice it's off, no green. Foot's on the brake and it's green. As you go to turn on the car, you put your foot on the brake, the light turns green, you push the button, and you are met with a traditional cluster. However, Mazda is now bringing you a digital cluster in the right-hand side. Active heads-up display includes everything from speed to navigation controls and things like that. Moving into your center console, you'll notice that it is very deep and spacious to accommodate anything that you would need to put in there. Additionally, there's two USBs and a 12 volt for you. Of course, there is a removable cubby and shelf. Rear seat amenities include dual climate vents, as well as dual map pockets finished in leather. The most exciting thing about the rear seat is the center armrest. Pull it down and you of course have your center cup holders, but you also have access to your three level heated seats for the rear seats. Open up the storage bin and you have an additional USB charger. A nice placement. Rear legroom isn't palatial, but it's definitely enough where I could be comfortable. Additionally, headroom is adequate to where I don't feel claustrophobic. Hey everybody, what's up? We are behind the wheel of the Mazda CX-5. Um, one of the first things that you notice about this car versus the previous generation is just how much more refined it is. They've done a lot of work on the interior and the body panels to make sure that you feel much more refined. It's much more luxurious uh, than I believe its segment represents. So I think this is a fantastic improvement uh, as compared to the previous generation. So while I'm sitting here waiting for traffic, I can talk to you guys about the engine. This is Mazda's typical inline four cylinder, naturally aspirated 2.5 liter Sky Active power plant. This will give you 187 horsepower, uh, which is about three more than the previous generation. Not a whole lot, uh, but some, and about 185 pound feet of torque. I definitely don't feel like this engine is underpowered. I think uh, as far as the competition, I think it's fairly in line. Where this car really shines on the road is where it handles. This car will handle a lot more like a car, like a sedan, like something lower with a lower center of gravity than something that you would expect from a, an SUV, something with a, a higher stance like this. Also, Mazda's 2.5 liter Skyactiv uh, power plant is attached to a six speed automatic transmission. Mazda says that's, that's really all the gears you need. You don't need this crazy nine or 10 speed automatic with you know, auto start stop and, and all this stuff to save fuel. Um, however, I will say that this generation Mazda CX-5 uh, suffers a little bit in terms of MPG as compared to um, the competition and even its previous generation. Uh, there's a bit more weight in it. It's about 3,600 pounds. Um, <clears throat> and that could add to the fact that it gets about uh, 29 MPG. There is a sport mode. Um, little lever next to your gear selector that lets you um, really change the gearing and the orientation of this car to be more of a sporty performance. I have it in sport mode right now. I'm cruising along. It's about 40 miles an hour uh, and it's just holding the gear up at about 4,000 RPM. I really don't feel like it needs to do that, but it's in case I want to get on the power really quick. I want to be right there in the torque band. Uh, I want to be able to, to put some power down. It's, it's ready for that anytime. That's the whole point of the sports uh, setting here. So there you have it guys. I mean, that's as far as driving dynamics, that's really the majority of this car. I mean, it's a family SUV. Uh, this car is meant for you to pack your kids in, pack all their stuff in, uh, and get you from A to B in a, a practical and, and luxurious manner. And I think it checks all those boxes, uh, especially with, you know, driver's aids and, and modern safety equipment, such as the lane keep assist, uh, the automatic, uh, or excuse me, ad adaptive cruise uh, with full stop. Uh, that's the first for this generation as well. I think Mazda's doing a really good job of getting their safety equipment up to date uh, and making sure that their cars are indeed price competitive and feature competitive with the segment. So overall, I think it's a fantastic showing from the Mazda CX-5. Um, the reason that you buy this car is you want the practicality of a small SUV, um, but you want to have something a little more, more sexy. And I know I'm using the word sexy a lot and that's kind of, you know, uh, a theme of this video, but it really is kind of the point of this car. But if you want something that's going to dazzle people and turn heads on the road, you're really going to want a CX-5. One thing also that I like that this Mazda CX-5 gives you is a lot more color options, um, especially in terms of interiors. Mazda, especially in their GT trims, are the only people 
with an available white leather option. And this tester doesn't have it, but I've been in a lot of them that do, and it just is the best interior upholstery color in this segment. Uh, you're not gonna get that in the CRV. Uh, you're not gonna get that in a Nissan Rogue. You're not gonna get that in a Subaru Forester, a RAV4, whatever. Like, the interior is really, the interior and the overall exterior aesthetic is really what's gonna win this car over for you if you're interested in something like a small SUV. Here we go. Give it a little bit of gas. Pitch it a little hard into this corner here. It holds on. That's one thing this car does phenomenally well is it holds on in corners, it handles like a car, low center of gravity, feels like you have a bunch of control. Um, and also one thing to mention about the driving dynamics of this car is it's a lot smoother than the previous generation. It feels more refined and not just in terms of uh, interior and build quality and things like that, but if it rides a lot smoother, um, it handles bumps a lot better, it's more composed behind the wheel when you're pitching it around. So overall a fantastic showing from Mazda and I'm very excited and it's a great car. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Mazda CX-5. If you are in the market for a small SUV, look no further than this. If you want style, practicality, luxury, refinement, sophistication, this is what you need. So please go and check out my friends at Hall Mazda uh, in Brookfield, Wisconsin. They have plenty of these on their inventory and they will take fantastic care of you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful in your decision. So please leave a comment, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.